Hi, welcome back. In the previous two videos, we saw how to submit our Spark jobs or any other kind of job on our data proc clusters. First, we saw how to submit the jobs via the Google Cloud Console. And in the second example, we saw how to submit the same job via G Cloud command line utility. Now, in this video, we are going to see yet another way to submit the jobs, although this is not a recommended way of doing that. But since we can do it, we are going to see the possibility. Uh, this way is similar to what we see in our clusters, which are in our own data centers or on-premise uh, clusters where there is one edge node and you log in into that edge node, you SSH into that edge node and do a Spark submit and run your jobs. So I will, I have opened up my clusters configuration page. Then I'll move to the VM instances tab where I will see all my instances here. But there is a fascinating thing that on the master node, you will see the SSH button. So I will click on that, which should open up a window and uh, it will start an SSH session uh, using the cloud shell. You might get a pop-up blocker warning. So allow the pop-up for uh, cloud.console.google.com and this is what this is doing is that it is creating a SSH key pair, attaching it to the VM's metadata and then establishing the connection. Yeah, so here we are in the VM. We will see what version of Spark we have. So we will see Spark submit. And yeah, so we are running Spark 2.4.7. So we will now submit our job. So I will say master yarn and then I will say deploy mode equals to client and then my driver file is there in the bucket so what I will do is I think I have mentioned the wrong name I will say spark right demo.py and I will enter I hope I have entered all the parameters correctly if I have entered all the parameters correctly my jobs will uh, job will start yes so it has started it says it has submitted the application. However, one thing which is very interesting in this way of submitting the job is that if you go to the jobs page, you won't see any job running here. Why is that? Because as I mentioned before, uh, before uh, starting this video is that this is not a recommended way. This bypasses the data procs layer of Spark and submit the job directly on the cluster right which we don't want so here you can see the job is completed our table must have been overwritten but what it does is that it bypass the data proc layer which spark or which gcp provides that's one part second point is one of the downside of this method is that if you have auto deletion enabled on your clusters the data proc api won't know that there is any job running so if you submit a job via this method and your cluster idle time reaches the maximum value, Google will delete your data proc cluster and your job will be killed in the middle. So this is not a recommended way to submit your jobs, but yes, it's a way and we saw that this is also possible. So yeah, so, uh, so far we have seen three ways of submitting the job. But you will note one interesting thing that we are reusing the same cluster. And as I said in the starting of this section, that right now the data is getting stored on the cluster directly. And if we delete the cluster, we will lose the data. So we will discuss the implications of this, uh, this way of managing our clusters in the next video. So till then, goodbye.